Hi, this is Deborah Peters and welcome back to The Deborah Peters Show. I'm absolutely thrilled to have you join me. Thank you for being a part of my channel. I really appreciate you and it's truly a gift to be able to share everything that goes on in my mind and what I've been teaching around the planet. So thank you for subscribing. Definitely give this a thumbs up if you like it. And for sure, you wanna share it with your tribe, share it with your team, because every time you give new information to your circle of influence, it enables them to take their lives and their business to the next level. And that would be greatly appreciated, I'm sure, by all of them. So thank you for tuning in. How risk adverse are you? You know, we all might think that we're an entrepreneur and I thought I would get into this today because many people call themselves an entrepreneur, but they're actually self-employed. And there's a big difference between being self-employed and being an entrepreneur. And we're gonna dig into that today and I'm gonna give you the link to my free business accelerator assessment. It will be a very thought provoking experience for you to be able to go through this assessment because you're gonna get a real clear picture as to how well prepared you are to grow, how open you are to receiving, and exactly where you're at in terms of being risk adverse or being really resilient. So let's dive into some of these concepts so you can begin to apply them immediately as we launch into this next year, this next decade, this really phenomenal time in history. This is your moment right here and right now to claim your success, to claim your expansion into all possibilities that maybe you might have discounted before because you didn't know the how. So here we go. So let's just talk a little bit about the difference between being an entrepreneur and actually being self-employed. The difference is really straightforward. It's when you're trading time for money, you basically are self-employed. You have a self-created job that you manage on your own for whatever reason you've structured it that way and it really isn't sustainable. So what that means by being not sustainable is if you didn't show up tomorrow, you wouldn't have any income and your business probably wouldn't function for very long without you. So you have a self-created job and that's okay if that's what you want. But I wanna just be really clear and I would like you to be able to truly see what it is that you've created and then make some pivotal decisions to, to turn the corner if being an entrepreneur is really what you would like to be. I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, but the self-employed are probably the highest taxed individuals in the country. And so taking it to that next level and becoming an entrepreneur is really the key to leveraging your time. Now, money is a renewable resource. You can always create more money if you're willing to put in enough sweat equity, but time is not. And so once that time is gone, it's lost. And essentially what I'm encouraging you to do is to completely maximize your time on this planet to make the absolute best out of the time that you have here and have it turn into a legacy. Have you thought about what you would like your legacy to be? And who is it that's gonna be the recipient of that legacy? Is it you know, family members in your immediate circle? Or is it your culture? <laughs> is it your community? Is it the world at large? Do you want to find yourself being that reference that future generations go to, to look at what you've created and to utilize 
what you've done as a way of up leveling their own growth and their own success. So that's the difference between being self-employed and having a self-created job where you're trading time for money and actually being an entrepreneur because an entrepreneur is really clear on their legacy. Actually, an entrepreneur is clear on a lot of things and that's what makes them so scalable in their process. Now, the challenge with this is the first and foremost choke point, and that is your mindset. So th there's three basic things that an entrepreneur has going for them. First and foremost, and most importantly, is the mindset. You've got to get that dialed. Now, I've spoken at conferences all over the world in 16 countries to probably every industry that exists from real estate, finance, tech, physician groups, healthcare, entertainment, um, oil and gas, construction, and the list goes on and on. The, the most important thing is that a lot of these entrepreneurs that are getting out there and they're building a legacy and they're developing companies is they they know that the mindset is the absolute most important element because it determines everything. Where most people are risk adverse and most people that are risk adverse, it's because they aren't very resilient. They don't have this internal connection to be able to not just bounce back, like we don't wanna bounce back, we wanna bounce up. I remember a few years ago, there, if you've read the book, Failing Forward, it introduced this concept of, it's not about bouncing back. If you're, if you're looking to go back to way, the way things were before you made the mistake, if you wanna call it that, or before you had your failure, then you're actually cutting yourself off from your expansion and from your growth. So essentially what we wanna do as entrepreneurs is we wanna really truly develop that mindset. Now I'm gonna talk about that a little bit, a little further on down in the video. The next thing you need as an entrepreneur is a skill set. So it's so easy now to, to gain that. You know, it's, it's everywhere. There's, I mean, there's YouTube. You can pretty much Google anything. You can search on YouTube anything that you might need help with from your strategy to uh, your business model, to building a team, you know, to social media marketing, to sales. You can pretty much Google or search YouTube for anything and you can get all sorts of free tutorials, which is fantastic. The thing is, is that you really have to know how to structure your mind and take yourself through not just that learning curve, but actually downloading the information and, and embodying it and turning it into a skill set that you then execute on that is measurable and, and producing results. So that's number two. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we get further on into the video as well. Number three is you have to actually be willing to follow a set of rules. And this is the other part that I think that really hinders or hijacks um, entrepreneurs from truly being to their greatest capacity in terms of their success. And that is the, the willingness to follow a set of rules. I learned a long time ago that through discipline comes freedom. It's actually a universal law that when you learn to discipline yourself, then you, on the other side of that discipline is the freedom. So let's kind of back up and start to unpack this and begin with the whole idea of mastering your mind. 
there is so much going on in the world right now and the changes are so rapid and they're so intense. Whenever there's a massive change like what we're experiencing right now, the biggest hurdle for most people is as cycles end, they don't know what they're being replaced with. It's like, okay, they're white knuckling the process. It's like, oh my God, this is, this is not working anymore. My social media is not working. My, my sales technique is not working. My business model is not working. Our strategic plan isn't clicking. The people we have aren't performing. Whatever the choke point is, it is a cycle that's ending and you have to view it as such rather than looking at it as being some kind of doom and gloom. It's actually an opportunity to up level. It's an opportunity. You have to ask different questions like what is right about this or, or what is it that this is showing me? Because as you get into the growth and the development of your business, it will show you where it wants to go next if you're paying attention. But you can't possibly be paying attention if you haven't mastered the mindset part first. I'm going to give you an example. I had a conversation today with a business leader and he's in the process of buying a very large organization. Well, it has a large footprint. Let's say that it's not doing so well financially, but it has an international footprint. And I've been talking to this fellow now for quite some time, a few years actually, and inviting him to come and participate in one of my programs so that he could learn what his choke point is. Cause he's one of those people and you might be too, that thinks that the problem is outside of you. If you just fix the client, if you could just change my team, if I just, you know, the economy was different or the politics were different then my business would thrive. And he's of that mindset. He really believes that his block is outside of him in the owners of the business that he's trying to purchase and nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, from his lips to your ears, he said, I don't really think I'm willing to spend any money right now to look at me. But if you have, you know, investors or people that I can talk to, I'd be more than happy to pay you to set that up. And I immediately thought to myself, if I was to take that closed mindset to any of my investors, they would think I was crazy. They'd be asking me, you know, Deborah, what are you doing? Because this isn't the, this isn't the attitude. This isn't the mindset that we work with, that we invest in. Think about what he's saying. Investors aren't going to invest in someone that doesn't think they need to consistently and constantly and almost obsessively improve themselves. So the mindset is going to make or break you and you're in charge of that. You're in the driver's seat of that. And so continuously upgrading, continuously expanding how you run your mind, changing your perceptions, being willing to ask higher level questions and to reach for the possibilities that you haven't even thought of yet. That is the number one advantage that an entrepreneur has over a self-employed person and over a corporate employed person. In a corporate realm, we're essentially looking for someone to take care of us. In a corporate realm, we're looking, that corporation is like our parents. <laughs> you know, that, that corporation is like mommy and daddy. It takes care of us. And I'm sorry if I'm offending any of you folks that work for corporations out there. And it's okay. You know, there's no judgment. It's just a different mindset. 
And so could you be an entrepreneur mindset within a large corporation? Absolutely. Running a team, there are people like that in every corporation, but not everyone in corporations are like that. And therein lies the difference. So the mindset is absolutely critical. The ability, or shall I say the willingness to fail if necessary in order to see what else is possible. So it, you know, the willingness to say, okay, I'm going to step forward based on this guidance, based on what's being shown to me right here and right now within my business model, within my strategy, within my team. And then let's say you step forward and it doesn't work. Then the willingness to say, I'm not a failure, but instead there's feedback in this. And this feedback is a guiding post to get me to what really is working and what I'm supposed to be focused on. And then you adjust and you change accordingly. So that's the part on mindset that's really, really important. It's really what I wanted to drive home in this particular video. And as we unfold this series of 2020 vision, we'll get into the skill set and, and we'll get into the actual rules that you need to employ to make these things come together. But really, I want you to just, I want you to take a step back right now. This is what I'd like you to do. I want you to just step back from your business and what you think it is right now as we conclude this year, this decade, this month. And I want you to ask you, start asking yourself some different questions about this next year, about this next decade that we're rolling into and what that really means to your willingness to challenge yourself, to think differently, to run different perceptions, to allow for different points of view, to release your false premises about what is possible and what you could be doing instead of being in this realm of limitation. So that is today's episode of The Deborah Peters Show. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate those thumbs up and the share and throw in some comments. I would love to know what it is that you would like to see and what content you would like to receive from me and I'll, I'll work that around. Have a blessed day. Ciao.